Hey there cats and kittens, got a new RU battle for you today against Tay Batmon. As you can already tell, I have greatly, greatly sped up this video, even more than I usually do, because if I didn't, this would have been a 25 minute video, and I just don't want to narrate that long. So anyway, I lead off with my Steelix, as he leads off with his uh, Swallow. I'm predicting the switch into Natu, but unfortunately my Stone Edge misses, and this is going to be hella annoying, because this Natu is the bane of my freaking existence. Yes, and it's basically going to have to keep me on my toes, I really need rock up uh, based on the Pokemon that he has on the other end, uh, namely Natsu and uh, I think he has three Pokemon actually that are weak to Silver Rocks. And I really want Rocks up, but I'm not going to be able to as long as that Natsu's around because I'm going to fear that it's just going to get magic bounced right back at me. I don't have a spinner, and although none of my Pokemon are too afraid of Rocks, it's still not a great idea on a stall team that's heavy on the switching. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and send out Tuesday. Um, to resist the close combat and get off the Intimidate. Uh, I really could have also sent out Slowbro, but just in case he had uh, some kind of Electric-type move. Well, I guess an Electric-type move would have hurt Tuesday just as much, and Tuesday does not have um, Regenerator. So anyway, uh, I go ahead and use Poison Jab here, I guess? And it actually does a fair amount, but he's going to get off a Spore, and so I'm just, I just was basically leaving in Tuesday to see, first of all, how much damage I could get off, and second of all, for Sleep Fodder. Uh, you know, the Spore was obvious, and I don't have anyone who has Vital Spirit, or um, I'm not running both Lance, so uh, I just really needed to put someone to sleep who wasn't vitally important. Um, so I go ahead and send out George the Third here, not, and uh, I'm thinking that I might be able to hit him with a Fire Blast for enough damage. He obviously thinks the same thing and switches into his uh, Lantern. I almost called it Angler because that's what I name my Lanterns. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and call George the Third back here, predicting... Uh, I don't know what I was... Oh, an Ultra type move. Uh, but I go ahead and send out Gargon, who gets burned. That's rather unfortunate, since this thing doesn't have any recovery. Well, I guess it has Leech Seed. But my opponent could easily predict that leech seed and go right into MC Hammer. I also have Giga Drain, so that's what I was going for. Again, I'm just really worried about that magic bounce, and I don't want it to come and bite me in the ass. I do an excellent switch into maybe, uh, thinking that I can get off a heal bell and uh, make it so my Gargan is no longer burned, which would be nice. And yeah, I'm confused, but that's really okay because. Uh, you know, I recover all that damage with leftovers anyway. I managed to get off the heal bell here, which is great, but now I have to worry about my Audino being put to sleep. And if there's one Pokemon that I don't want to be put to sleep, it's my Audino. So I'm going to go ahead and send out Gargon just to get that, just to take the spore. It gets put to sleep, and I figure it's not really going to be very useful in this battle. And it's going to be nice to have some sleep fodder. I actually stay in, seeing if I'll get the first turn wake up so I can go for the hidden power fire. I don't, so I'm going to have to switch out. I'm going to go ahead and go into Hatterack, thinking that I can probably take most attacks from this guy. I see hidden power, I'm worried that it's hidden power fire. It's luckily not. I'm actually not sure what it was. I think he might have said that it was supposed to be hidden power fire, and it was a miss save. I don't remember. Anyway, I go for the Earthquake instead of the Stone Edge because I didn't think that he'd switch in his MC Hammer, but he does, and so that's a waste of turn. Now I go for the Stone Edge. It actually connects, but it sucks because he sent out his Hitmontop, predicting that quite well. I'm going to go ahead and swap out into Gargon, just thinking that um, you know I should be able to take it. I do not take it. Uh, he gets a crit. I'm pretty sure that crit mattered, but whatever. Gargon is down. I'm going to go ahead and send out Tuesday. Not sure why I'm not sending out my Slowbro, uh, sorry, Slow King, because I'm pretty sure Slow King could take probably just as well. Um, so I managed to get up a layer of spikes because he, I hadn't shown him that I had the spikes, so that was really, really excellent. I managed to get up his spikes um, when there's no. You know, without getting them bounced back, so excellent play on my part. He goes ahead and discharges me, doesn't get the Parahax, but does do a whole lot of damage. I'm not going to be able to survive another round of that, so I'm going to go ahead and switch out into maybe, knowing that I can wall whatever this guy is doing, uh, and I go... Uh, he goes for the Thunder Wave, it's, uh, it's a double switch on our parts. Um, I go for the Wish, going to swap out, send out Hatterack, just to get Hatterack back up to full HP. Uh, and, you know, it's, it can pretty much wall this guy, and I have a good shot of one hit KOing him if I ever do hit him with a Stone Edge. I actually go for the Dragon Tail here, just thinking that he was going to switch, and just seeing, you know, get, get off some residual damage. So his Nightlight is out, I'm going to go ahead and call back, go ahead and send out maybe. It would have actually been a good opportunity for me to set up my Stealth Rock, since I do have Sturdy, and I, I'm pretty sure I could have taken that Scald anyway, because I am Sassy Max Special Defense. But yeah, so 
more switching, lots and lots of switching in this battle. I go for the heal bell, uh, recover maybe of the paralysis, the only Pokemon that actually was benefited there, but I really didn't want uh, Parafusion, so that's really quite excellent. I go ahead and protect here just to see what he's going to do. I see that he has the facade, and so I think, okay, well, I don't want to stay in for that. Hotterack should be able to tank whatever he's going to dish out, and indeed, it's going fairly well. Uh, I'm hoping that I will have the presence of mind to put up a scoreboard in the annotations that is uh, put up the number of KOs we've got on each side because it's really impossible in these long stalling matches to tell who's ahead, who's behind, um, without me telling you otherwise because I've completely lost track at this point. So Hatterack goes ahead and takes the spore. I'm not sure why I left him in. I guess I was running out of sleep fodder because the two most useless Pokemon are already put to sleep. I actually get the first turn wake up and get the stealth rocks which is so freaking amazing and I was just so happy at this point. Obviously I'm going to want to switch out because this Magmortar can one hit KO me with Fire Blast no problem and I need something to take out that not to. Uh, so yeah, he is probably some kind of choice item so uh, not surprising there. I go for the Scald not uh, just not wanting to over predict and it's okay because his lantern is down to so little hp thanks to you know two rounds of entry hazards that he is going to die from poison this turn so that is excellent at taking out another very wally pokemon i think i can survive a facade i'm not 100 percent sure but i'm gonna risk it i survive with 51 hp go for the scald and my George III has gotten yet another kill, and that's really, really amazing. This guy is just so freaking awesome. So, I'm going to want to go ahead and call my George III back. I go ahead and send out Tachikoma. I don't think he's going to go for the Spore, and indeed he doesn't, which is excellent. And so now I'm thinking, okay, well this thing's the biggest threat on his team, and I should be able to cripple it if I can trick it a Choice Scarf, because then it'll be locked into one move. Uh, if he's locked into Spore, there's some issues with Sleep Claws that I don't want to, I'm glad I didn't have to deal with. Uh, so I'm actually glad that he over, that he predicted me there. Going to go ahead and stay in. Now that I know that he's uh, Scarf from that Specs, I really know I have nothing to fear from him. I do get burned, and that's less unfortunate. I go ahead and call, uh, send out George III. I'm not sure why I didn't just send George III out right away. Uh, um, oh, I guess I'm trying to get some recover, uh, some regenerator de uh, recovery off on all of my Pokemon. Yeah, regenerator cores, like the ones I run, are really, really evil, and mean that basically, uh, depending on your opponent, you can actually just stall them out just by doing switching and the fact that you recover a third of your health each time. I'm not doing that in this battle. I hope to never do that. Anyway, get an excellent prediction here. Go for the Fire Blast, hits his Fungus, and I'm hoping that one more will be able to KO. I do see that I'm faster. I go first, KO with a Fire Blast, and that's excellent. So now he's really running out of Pokemon, and I'm just hoping that I can finish him off. Although, what, as you can see, there's, what, three minutes left in this battle? So, obviously, it's not over yet. I go for the Scald here. I'm hoping to get the Burn Hacks, I don't think that Magic Bounce protects you from burn. So he goes ahead and goes for the Confuse Ray here. He's obviously going to set up a Parafusion strategy. And I get hit by the Confusion, which is less than fortunate. But as you can see, I'm recovering that health with leftovers anyway. He goes ahead and T-waves me here. And so yeah, full on Parafusion. I hit myself in the Confusion, and this is not an ideal situation at all. But I think I'm going to stay in because I really don't think there's anything he can do to me. And if I can get burn damage on him, I should be able to uh, get a lot closer to KOing this bastard. So yeah, I hit myself in the uh, in the Confusion yet again. He goes for the Nightshade, which is his only attacking move. I get hit by the con in the Confusion. Uh, and yet, yeah, again, this is really not that great of a situation for me. I finally give up, send out my maybe, he predicts that, but it's actually quite nice because I can't be paralyzed until I get off the heal belt. And once I get off the heal belt, I can switch into someone else anyway. So he's going to go ahead and withdraw, go ahead and go into Hitmontop, real, or not Hitmontop, Hitmon Lee, realizing that if he can KO, maybe he's going to be in a really good situation. But there's no reason for me to stay in. I'm going to go ahead and swap out into Tuesday just to take the hit and get off the Intimidate. He goes for the close combat, and that is going to take out my um, Quillfish, and that's less than fortunate. By the way, Quillfish has gotten a, gone up way, way a lot in usage. I believe it's going to be UU next cycle if it's 
if it keeps up this level of usage. Now again, the tiers aren't going to be updated for another two months, not until January, so no need to be replaying my team yet, but I will be cranky if January comes along and I have to find someone to fill maybe, uh, maybe spot, not maybe, I'm sorry, uh, Tuesday's spot. Anyway, still no burn off this MC Hammer, but I'm going to keep going for the Scald, hope for the burn, still don't get it, so maybe Magic Bounce does block uh, secondary effects like that, but I don't think it does. It just must be really unlucky. So I'm back up to full HP. Uh, he's going to go ahead and T-wave me just for the full-on parafusion, and I actually stay in. I'm breaking through the confusion quite well. Go for the Scald. He's down to very low HP, and so I'm going to go ahead and send a Tachikoma as he goes for the quite obvious Roost, but I'm hoping that, you know, I am Scarf, not Specs or anything, but I'm hoping that a super effective Stab Volt Switch will be able to KO. And yes, it is, and I'm so happy I've taken it down, and now I can send out George III, who should be able to take uh, deal with the rest of his team. Uh, so I'm not, you know, often the times these guys run Thunderbolt, but I think I can take it because I have a specially defensive wall, and indeed I do take it, I go for the skull, it's going to take out Maggie, and that's his Mag Mortar, and that's really excellent, and now he's got down to his last Pokemon, which is his Hitmon Lee. I think I can survive one close combat, so as long as I don't get Parahacks, I should be okay. And indeed, uh, I don't get Parahacks, I can go for the Scald, which thanks to the fact that his defenses were lowered, um, I take him out, and that's the end of the battle. So comment, rate, subscribe, and challenge.